Hello, my name's Jo Higgins and I'm here for Art Collector's Pool Focus series and I'm really excited to be uh, talking today to Abdul Abdullah and Abdul Rahman Abdullah about your collaborative exhibition Peripheries. So thank you both for joining me um, from opposite sides of the country. Yep, but, yep. <laughs> but before we get to uh, talking about, you know, the joys or the, maybe the perils of um, working with your siblings, I would really love for you both, um, if you wouldn't mind, introduce your respective practices for anyone who might not be familiar with your work. Um, let's who wants to kick it off? We'll go with seniority. Let's go. Oh, I was going to suggest that you go first, my brother. Oh, no, you go, bro. You please. Very polite. <laughs> okay, I will go first. Um, my name is Abdul Rahman Abdullah, and I'm just calling in from Wajak Nunga country in the Peel region, just south of Bulu, Perth in WA. Um, I'm a sculptor. <laughs> I love it. You clearly yeah. practice. <laughs> Succinct. I love it. Okay, I'm Abdul the Younger, <laughs> Abdul Abdul, <laughs> and I uh, I'm on Gadigal Country in Sydney. Um, I'm, I'm currently in my studio at the moment, where I'm primarily working with paintings, but I kind of work across, uh, do things across the board with photography and installation and a little bit of sculpture. But at the moment, oh. <laughs> especially during COVID, I am like elbows deep in painting. Right. Each of your practices are, you know, visually very distinctly your own. Um, yeah. But I'm wondering in terms of this, this exhibition and, and, you know, bringing your works together, firstly, how this opportunity to collaborate uh, came about. So we've been making art at the same time in parallel pretty much our entire lives. He's obviously been going out longer than me. He's like nine years older than me. Uh, but he, and when, so when had I was to, in Had to get school, that in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's decrepit. But like... <laughs> <laughs> But when so when I was in high school, he was at art school, and I was he's my big brother, so I think he's the coolest person in the world. So I was always following his in his footsteps. And since becoming a, a professional artist, we try and do one project a year together, at least one project a year together. Yeah. We've done shows together in Perth, in Sydney, um, in uh, in New Zealand, at Wellington, in um, and Auckland. Uh, where else? We've Adelaide, we've done stuff. Yeah, so Adelaide, we try and do that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah right jumping right. around. And we work, it's collaborative, but not necessarily collaborative on the one works in the show. It's mm -hmm. always our own works in their show, our own voices, but I think they work uh, congruously. Or, like they, 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 they've always, there's always a natural dialogue between the two because mm -hmm. of our natural affinity and the way that we've grown up together. And we're still our number one sounding board. So I speak oh, to my much. brother yeah, almost every day. Yeah, um, we it's get, an ongoing we thing as well. We've got we've got projects sort of planned together coming up over the next few years. They're sort of they're, they're kind of um, I mean to me like high points in the next few years coming. So it's just a part of what we do, I guess. Although at the same time, we've both got our individual practices, and our individual careers. It's sort of just a part of what we do is working together like that. Yeah. Um, and it was just very organic, very natural thing to to be doing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's interesting that I'll come. I mean I'm interested in that that dialogue between both of your works and maybe we can come back to that. But I suppose I'm just interested in terms of, you know, that this is a regular kind of thing that you do together that you come back to. And I'm wondering in terms of this specific exhibition, like what does it meant, the timing of this meant in terms of, I suppose, some of the ideas that you're both exploring respectively in your practices? What does what this particular collaboration uh, brought about? What does it mean? It came about in 2020 when COVID hit and there was a lot of cancellations. Things got postponed. Uh, it, it was the same story with us as it was for so many people. Um, and so part of our response to that was, you know, my schedule got pushed back. It didn't get cleared. It got pushed back quite a lot. So there was room to move. And so we decided to do this project with our respective commercial galleries. In this case, Yavuz Gallery in Sydney and more contemporary in Perth. Um, where would we, we would do this show in two parts, two iterations of the same show based, uh, called Peripheries and based on ideas of, you know, what is peripheral, what is central, um, and how, you know, and, and our lived experiences in relation to that and in relation, I mean, it wasn't, we didn't want to make a project going, oh, this is about COVID times, it's about pandemic. It was just about what we were experiencing and how we related that to our own our own histories and what was going on in the world at that time. So, our, you know, and our thoughts on and our work, what we were actually looking at over the two shows, for me especially, it did actually change a little bit over that time, you know. 
Because um, that first one we did at the Avos Gallery in Sydney, that was really in for me over here in uh, Fortress WA. Was during a period of lockdown, so um, yeah. you know the Maybe past I'll tense be. lockdown. <laughs> yes, and that really informed what I was doing, as opposed to you know what we did. These pictures here come from more contemporary, which was it's still up now. You know, just opened a couple of weeks ago with big crowds of that opening. I might add, it was wonderful. <laughs> it was really busy. It was actually great. Um, the only the only person who wasn't there was my brother. <laughs> yeah, and it's worked out um, this way that our show in Sydney, my brother couldn't come because of the yeah. Perth lockdown. And then this time, the show in Perth, I can't be over there because of the Sydney lockdown. So we've had our, yeah. our turn, we've taken turns in that respect. <laughs> yeah. But I think, you know, this idea of, of peripheries, which is, as you said, the title of, of the show, you know, it is, it's a really affecting idea. You know, it's both, as you said, you know, a literal geographic kind of experience, you know, away from the centre. But you know, it's also, you know, it can also be this kind of cultural or emotional space or experience. And I'm wondering, you know, how you both understand and experience this idea of kind of peripheries and how you've conceptualised it and brought it into focus here in, in this particular collaboration. May I go first with a, like a broad answer? Yes, to that you one? may, my brother. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So with, with um, one of the things that's defined both of our practices, I think that's something that we've talked about from the beginning is a the difference between our formative experiences growing up as Muslims in Australia, but I talk about the pre, I mean, the post 9-11 experience. And my brother speaks to the pre-9-11 experience, or at least our formative periods, his was pre-9-11 and mine was post-9-11. So it, it very much shaped the way that we made work, um, where my brother looks at a lot about domesticity, about cultural stories, about very personal stories. And I'll look to the outside at politics and external politics and that sort of thing. Um, while with this particular show, I think speaking on my own behalf, the idea, although those external politics are coming into the work, it has been a little bit more introspective. And the idea of peripheries has been less about a particular or specific marginalized voice or someone living on the peripheries and more an internal one with the idea of uh, coping with personal issues or, or overcoming personal obstacles and sort of with a tongue in cheek, not cynical is the wrong way to put it, but like pessimistically, optimistically looking at the way that we experience our lives. And the ocean for me has act, acted as a metaphor um, for borders or an obstacle that exists between where you are and where you want to be. And in previous works, I'd had the horizon in the distance of these ocean breaks. So you could see a potential, but with these particular works, uh, the entire canvas, the entire composition is you're in the middle of the swell. Mm -hmm. So there's no particular direction that you're seeing forward. You're just in the midst of it with your own thoughts and your own self and coming to terms with those things. Mm -hmm. What about you, Abdul Rahman? Yeah, the introspective look. I mean, that's the way I kind of work a lot. It's very introspective. It's very self-focused, <laughs> yeah, very autobiographical, I suppose. Um, but with, um, with this particular show, I mean, the first body of work was really about this idea of stasis and being sort of just putting, putting everything on hold and waiting. And the works I'd done for that were, it's a nice image to be showing alongside the works I'm describing, which are not been pictured, which are, were really draped and covered and hidden works, you know, it's all about this edited uh, experience of the world, this truncated experience of the world. Um, with this second body of work, for me, because there was a good, like, um, you know, about nine months, I think, in between making the first series and then making the second series. So, well, I mean, my life situation and my experiences had changed a little bit in that time. And then during the second body of work, which is what we're looking at now, I actually started looking at I mean, they were still much, very much based in these ideas of domesticity. Um, I mean, this is a portrait of my goat. That, to me, this is a, a very domestic scene. <laughs> they don't keep their pet goat at close hand. Um, but I really started thinking about that, you know, embodiments of domesticity, but as a reflection of um, something very territorial, because, I mean, that's what I was seeing, especially here in Australia. It's like the, the rest of the world uh, you know, stop being talked about. And we became very territorial, very state-based, very, um, you know, we throwing, kept throwing up borders and um, lockdowns and all these things. We, we started really retreating behind our own, you know, boundaries within Australia. So I want, the works I was making were really responding to that idea of embodiments of territorial thinking, but in, you know, in a, in a very, um, I said, sort of personalised, subjective way. And to me, for example, you know, a ghost is the ultimate embodiment of 
territorial thinking. It's literally someone who has never left that space and will never leave that space, you know. Um, and same with, say, for example, the dog, the little French bulldog. Um, I mean, this one's just called um, the ornament. Um, but that idea of, um, for example, if this animal cannot exist anywhere. Its natural environment is a domestic landscape. It cannot exist anywhere else. But that the territory that surrounds it is its territory. And the way I always set it up, so you encounter it at a certain level, you're almost making eye contact with um, with the dog. Like you are a guest in its space, you know. And it's the same with the ghost. You, I mean, the ghost and goat. It got a bit confusing with a ghost and a goat. But yeah, you are really entering its space. And I wanted to make this audience very aware that you're entering a space where you are not necessarily, you're sharing it with this animal. Um, yeah, so that, that's where my thing. So I think it was very much in parallel, but it really reflects our own situation as well. Mm. I think there's, there's something really interesting about these sort of two different manifestations of interior kind of spaces. And I, and I suppose I wonder about how in bringing these particular collections of work together, how you sort of see those two conversations taking place between the works. You know, is there something, what's, what does each other's practice bring to this kind of context, do you think? Okay, let me have a crack at this. It's sort of, <laughs> it's, I, I feel, this is a personal take, so I haven't talked to my brother about this. Okay, great, um, this is good. But, yeah, but it's, it's, it, it, it feels like with the ghost, with the goat and with, with the French bulldog, there is that sense of, domestic familiarity to it even though you know not saying everyone's seen a ghost but everyone's seen someone put a sheet over somebody pretending to be a ghost there's that sense of familiarity about their um as if you're in a home or if you're in that domestic setting and then I feel my work speaks to that or they speak to each other where the, my brother's work is what you're seeing and what you remember um and then my work is what you're feeling or an internal dialogue or a commentary of these other things um, it feels that my brother's work is the real and my work is the imagined in this situation, even though that could be sort of swapped around in different ways, but like that's that, that's what you're thinking on the inside. And for the example, this work on the right, um, you're okay. Uh, like the, the nickname that I've given these particular works is like, I didn't mean to gender them, but they're Rocky Boys. That's what I'll call them when I paint them, my Rocky Boys series of these rocks in the ocean. And I kind of see them as like, personally, like it doesn't matter necessarily the audience sees them this way, but I see them as self-portraits. But I hope they're ambiguous in their features enough that anyone can project themselves on there and see a portrait of themselves in that space as this unsure, insecure, a little bit happy, a little bit reassured, but, you know, full of anxiety rock that's, alone in a crashing ocean so that yeah i think we can all relate to that experience at the same time and looking at the at the ghosts and the way that these two these two works sit next to each other i feel those anxieties are uh, communicated by this ghost maybe it's because i grew up with older brothers who would terrorize you terrorize me but like, yeah. hey, we grew up in a very haunted house too and when <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about, you know the real and the imagined no look at that ghost. yep Funnily enough, that's not what a ghost looks like, mm. but that's what a ghost looks like in our minds. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that, that's my take on it. Yeah. 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 Does that track for you, Abdul Rahman? Oh, absolutely. I love that because we always talk about, you know, um, interior and exterior, like yeah, external yeah. Um, perceptions and, you know, the, the, the inner voice and, you know, the, that inner life and inner dialogues. And in some ways, like with this particular show, like a lot of those... Um, you know, those folks has got reversed in that way, where yeah. my, you know, my brother was being was much more pushed into this much more introspective space. I mean, and that was, you know, not just as a result, but you know, the circumstances of where you are, you know, you guys were in lockdowns a lot more. It was a lot more prevalent. There's a lot more, um, you know, people around you that sort of the global impact of the, of the pandemic is all around you. Where well, I'm on a farm just south of Perth, we're already like one of the most isolated cities in the world and I'm sort of isolated from that. I mean, we've got a two kilometre driveway. The, the idea of lockdown is just, I don't know, I, yeah, like I was saying, I missed my, our last one. I forgot we had one. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so that, I can't even remember where I was going with this, but I really do like that sort of reversal of interior and exterior landscapes, you know, to me, you know, that inner dialogue, which my brother is talking about is such a um, a relatable thing, I guess. Um, and my works are kind of almost just standing in 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 witness to that inner dialogue. I mean, as you come into the space, 
I mean, you can see these works. This is the, the, the way the gallery is set up. You can see those works, particularly the big text works, from out of the gallery, from across the square. You know, they're through these big plate glass windows. And there is no one who walked past that who isn't drawn into that as something they, they, they've said to themselves on almost <laughs> on a daily basis. And I love the incongruity of a goat in that space. For me, I mean, my goat, Trevor, he's out the back of my studio. He's someone, that work is called Same Time Tomorrow. And that was sort of reflecting on that daily ritual of visiting Trevor, feeding him, having a chat, telling him off or whatever. Um, that is such a, you know, a, an embodiment of domesticity to me personally. And putting that into this, because I mean, where the, um, the gallery is in Perth, it's like, it's a real corporate hub as well as, you know, city centre. Um, I just love putting my goat in there in, and he's so um, comfortable and at ease. He, that, that's his space. You are entering his space. Yeah. Um, and, you know, those, are, those um, you know, shaky affirmations, things usually work out. Things always work out for Trevor. It's never occurred to him that they won't. <laughs> 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 Not once. He doesn't realise there's a pandemic on. His world is as long as that oh, chain. <laughs> lucky Trevor. I, mean, I think it's really, it's, I think it's really interesting that you both, you know, you come back to and, and look for this opportunity, you know, you know, on a regular basis to, yeah. to to collaborate and work, and you know, so there's obviously something really productive about it. But you know, as somebody that's also one of four, I'm kind of just a little bit in awe of the fact that as siblings that you're able to kind of do that. And I just, I, I mean, and I just wonder if there's anything about. The collaboration that's sort of surprised you this time around and what it means to actually be working as siblings in this in this way well i find that like i've described working as an artist as being a soul trader soul trader on the most volatile fickle industry on the planet like it's sort of you're at sea most of the time and i've got my brother to do it with me so like it's sort of i i I'm not ever doing it alone. And I know a lot of artists do do it alone. I've always mm. got my brother to lean on and he's always got me to lean on. So that sort of support network, I can only say positive things about yeah. it. If I was going to pick an artist to work with anyway, it would be my brother, you know, regardless of, you know, it would be our Abdul Abdullah, who's pretty cool. Um, I would work with him. But one of the funny things about our relationship as artists is that, you know, although I went to art school earlier and all that sort of thing, my brother actually became an artist about four years before I did, because he went through art school um, and we were living together at the time and he was in his very early 20s. Um, and when he finished in 2008, that's when I decided to go back. I never actually finished my art degree. I was doing all sorts of other things, but um, it was only after basically living vicariously through him going through art school again. And then when he got out and his career began and it really, you know, it was a different era from when I went to art school in the 90s. Um, so in that respect, I followed him back into art school and into an art career. So he's been an artist for, you know, as time goes on, that four years tends to shrink, but, you know, at, <laughs> especially at the beginning. So I felt I was really learning how to be, how to be a professional artist long before I was actually a professional artist, just because we were, you know, always together on everything. So he was instrumental in me being able to, like, well, that's sun, like avoid a lot of the pitfalls of you know of being an emerging artist just because um i was letting him make the mistakes i'm like <laughs> <laughs> you didn't make any bro you made no mistakes yeah. <laughs> <See>? <laughs> and if either of us get too mean we just tell the other one tells mum so yeah. we'll... <laughs> i'm telling mum <laughs> <laughs> yeah the great democratizing force in the art yeah. world he's yeah. the favorite but he's the youngest he's the, he's the the <laughs> um, thank you both so much. I've just really loved talking with you both and getting this sort of insight into both of your practices and your relationships and your kind of artistic kind of friendship, really, I think. So um, not to put too saccharine a kind of, you know, lens on it. Um, so thank you both so much. I really appreciate it. No, thank no you so much. Thank you so much. Mm.